Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Robeson and you're here for another styles video. This style is particularly special because of the way it came about in the first place. Do you know what was involved? There was a war, there was a space race, there was the invention of the very first computer, there was the invention of materials that had never been used before in furniture and architecture. It kind of became an iconic style that we now call mid-century modern. The architectural elements in a mid-century home are what make it so unique. I happen to be sitting in one right now because my realtor, Mike Keyes here in Tulsa, he got me into another fabulous house. One of the things that make mid-century modern so special is the fusion of natural woods, bringing the outdoors in, fresh and open light, and simplicity. Some of the characteristics that we think about when we think about mid-century modern is a lot of wood, kind of this mid-tone color, stone, natural light being emitted through large plate glass windows, and a very open space. The house that I'm in right now is actually on the market. The architect on this particular home is E. Fay Jones. He's a very famous, very famous architect. And this mid-century modern look is so everywhere. I mean, the light fixtures. And I look at things and I think, there's a purpose for everything in this house. And really, it's quite minimal in the way that it's built. I do have another home I'm gonna take you to today, which is a traditional mid-century home that was built in the 50s. It's the real deal. I think now would be a great time to explore a little history of the mid-century modern style. I find it interesting and valuable to observe the original mid-century modern design style made popular in the 50s and see how it evolved into the 60s. At the time, the World War II vets were just returning home. There was a new use of materials that had resulted from the war, like chrome, acrylic, plastic, even laminates that were actually able to curve and bend in furniture pieces. This was something quite new. All easily accessible materials after the war that could now be used for the first time. They could be mass produced, thus making furniture more affordable. Some pretty phenomenal furniture pieces and the designs were coming from Scandinavia, Italy, France, Brazil, and of course, the United States. And some of these designers have become quite famous and iconic for their shapes and their designs. For the most part in the 50s, women stayed home or were often a part of a secretarial pool if they did work. While the men, well, they brought home the bacon. I still find it hard to believe a few things like smoking on airplanes and in restaurants even in front of your kids and at work, well, these were completely acceptable at the time. Although the computer was definitely invented by this time, in the early 50s, home computers were non-existent. So without Pinterest or the internet or even YouTube or Instagram, how did these people get their inspiration to decorate or change their own style in their homes? Well, I can tell you, they did have television and of course newspaper and magazines. Well, according to Google, about only 8,000 homes in the US had a television in the 50s. If you happened to be one of those lucky individuals to have a TV in your home, you were probably the most popular place on the street. So how would TV and magazines make an impact on interior design in the 50s anyway? Well, fashion, of course. In addition, the current times. And Houston Discovery. Roger roll, Discovery. Houston Discovery, how do you read? At this point, America was engaged in and obsessed by what was known as the space race. This was between America and Russia. How did this affect interior design? Well, it resulted in a direction of all things kind of spacey, like the atomic clock, starbursts, accessories and candles that look like rocket ships, even light fixtures like the Sputnik pendants and chandeliers. Atomic prints were even found on dishes and on wallpaper. 
I think area rugs too, to be honest. Well, by the 60s, the style was in high gear, and in fact, it was evolving to a more mod look, as were the times. After all, it has been called the swinging 60s. It's not hard to see how the culture would seep into home decor. The mid-century modern design style held fast, but became bolder in color and sexier in form. It went from burnt rust in the 50s to bright orange in the 60s, avocado green to lime green, and from harvest gold to daisy yellow. In addition, wallpaper gained a wider appeal as color was in full gear. Oh, and I almost forgot. I personally experienced mid-century modern in the 60s because my family moved from Oregon to California in 1968 and we bought a one-story flattish roof home. In my bathroom, there were hanging beads in the window used as window treatments. And they were this color combination. <music> Ceilings got higher, window treatments got brighter, and living rooms got sunken. Outstanding architectural element that I love from this era was the importance of a fireplace, either in your living room or your family room. We've kind of gotten away from that so much today. However, using natural stone in the 50s, it transitioned in the 60s to more colorful versions, like this one, offset with bright painted overlays. I mean, the stone or the brick is still there, but you see the difference into the 60s? This is also the era that introduced the two-sided fireplace as well as the three-sided. I will say though, my personal favorite was the freestanding or even the free-floating fireplace that added drama. And sometimes it added color, but it was always a sexy focal point to any room. This style, perhaps more than any of the others that we've unwrapped in this series, has stood the test of time. Not just in its infancy in the 50s, or its coming of age in the 60s, but even today. In the 2020s, homeowners are still using iconic mid-century furniture pieces in their homes, but they're mixing them with other styles. Today, people want to create their own style, which, honestly, I applaud. They're leaning into the power of nature with fresh house plants, silhouettes with simple shapes, and they're looking at sustainability using organic materials like rattan, cork, and wood. They're also choosing upcycled materials and repurposed plastics, and they're vibing on color from nature like white, okra, plant-like greens, and saddle-like browns. A carryover, however, is the abstract art that's often used as an object for pops of color. Honestly, no longer is there an emphasis on the free-spirited mod culture of the 60s, but rather a personal preference for functionality and simplicity. And, to be honest, individuality. Today we're going to have the opportunity to tour the Lady Lorton House here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is a flat roof construction. It is mid-century all the way, and it was built in the early 1950s. Let's go inside and take a look. Well, I feel pretty special being able to tour this house because it's one of the few homes still in Tulsa. They have a lot of mid-century properties here but most of them have been renovated and some of the original characteristic things about mid-century have been changed. This one still has everything as it was when it was built in the early 50s. One of the things that's very, very characteristic of a mid-century home is the wood paneled flooring. It's not paneled, it's a parquet. So the grain changes each time it goes, so it creates like a checkerboard pattern, but it is solid mahogany. And at the same time, mahogany paneled walls. This is all original to this house, as well as a beam structure that then goes over and looks at the windows. 
In the 50s, mid-century modern was in a color palette much like you see here. A lot of neutral colors, that being the wood, the walls were usually white, but the furniture pieces would be in blues, rusts, sometimes greens, but it was a little bit more earthy at that time. But this right here is really cool to me because this furniture is 100% mid-century modern. The furniture during the mid-century era uh, was very uh, functional, definitely low to the ground, but there was interesting things about it. It's a little bit artsy to me. If you take a look at this chair from the side, you'll see that there's this channel right here. Now, why would they do the channel? Is that strictly to be interesting, artsy? No, mid-century was all about intentional design and things were super functional and there was a reason why they did things and yet they made it look good at the same time. You know what it is? It was, dad is coming home for dinner, mom's got a pot roast on the stove. He gets home and he sits down on the sofa and this little channel here was meant to be a way for cool air to breeze through and lighten his load on his back. How thoughtful. These chairs are awesome and I think these are really iconic chairs from, you know, the mid-century modern movement. When you see the fronts of these legs, how they come up and they roll down and around. Remember, this is the time when acrylic and plastic became really popular. Now that's not on here, but the acrylic and the plywood furniture is what they used to create this very rolling one piece effect, one look. Take a look at this clock. That is like so mid-century and yet it says that it's um, 625 and I can guarantee you it is not. <laughs> Art pieces were, at that time, mostly geometric shapes. They were shapes, arcs, triangles, circles, whatever. But you either see bright colors like this or you can see black and whites. And this is the color palette right here for the early movement of the mid-century modern. I would say, for the most part, I speak for myself, I don't know that I would ever want a 100% mid-century home that you know has the architecture and all the furniture is exactly that, because I think you get bored with it after a while, and it does feel almost like a television set, right? Oh, speaking of television, you know what? One of my favorite uh, series to watch was, I watched it a long time ago, Mad Men. Have you seen Mad Men? Watch it, because that is totally the style of mid-century modern, and they did such a good job at it. When I see this little hanging piece here and the sculpture, the, the shapes, the rounds, solid, some that are open, some that have a little one hanging in them, I just think it's really perfect for this look. It adds a bit of humor <laughs> and lightheartedness, but it's also very see-through. So again, you're keeping the line simple and clean, but you're adding just a little something that adds a sense of art and sculpture to your space. I'd be interested in knowing the story behind this piece. I'm not sure where the homeowners got it or who designed it, but it just falls in line with everything that we're talking about with mid-century because even art pieces like will have like a line and then a thing that goes over and then a square on the top, just little uh, color blocks on it. And again, super open, super airy, just like minimalist and yet makes a, some sort of a decoration statement or a design style statement, which is definitely mid-century modern. And the fact that it is uh, put into this light colored wood just kind of fits the whole style, don't you think? How perfect. The Aero Serenin tulip table and the Z chairs or S chairs, depending on how you look at it. I don't know that these are the original pieces, but the, yeah, that's the thing about mid-century. It has become so um, easily accessible and affordable. You buy the real one, you're gonna spend $5,000 or more. You buy a knockoff and you can get it for, I don't know, 500. So you can get the look of mid-century without having to have the actual pedigree. And I think that's what they've done here, but look at this against this 
This is an old hi-fi. You know what a hi-fi is? I do, because I'm sure my dad had one. It's awesome, but it's again in the mid-tone color, and you can tell the, the mid-century lines. It's got the vertical lines here, but look at how this comes here, and it just curves over the top. I mean, that is just so cool. Same thing here, and how these doors are, are carved in. It gives like a scalloped effect, even this. Now, here's a, a detail to know about mid-century. This was the era of minimalist and making everything functional. So one of the things that you'll see that is missing on the mid-century look is handles. You don't see hardware on the cabinets. The, this is all, I don't even know how, well, well, there you go. You just open it that way. So the designers were designing these things to just be so clean that the the shape, the silhouette of the piece of furniture was what stood out and made it beautiful, but you don't have any hardware. And it's a good thing because hardware can definitely date a piece of furniture. It can also add to it, but I think this is awesome. And a perfect light fixture over a table. Do you see how it encompasses the round ball effect here? but then acrylic in between. It's almost like if you look up at it, it's almost like a tic-tac-toe. And then, hello, a swag chain. Oh my gosh, I remember my mother swagging our dining room chandelier or light fixture over our table. Why, they didn't put the in the ceilings. In fact, I look through here, there is no lighting that's coming from the ceiling. Back in the day, this all used to be Something like this, where you would swag it across, you get it where you want it, swag it across, bring it down, and plug it in. And one thing to think about in a mid-century modern home, especially if you have an, uh, an original type where the architecture has these amazing windows, if you can get away with having no window treatments, that's the look. That's not always possible. If this was my home and I you know, needed privacy, I would probably put in something like roller shades that just went up and you don't see them anymore. But they're able to keep the integrity of this architecture and the beautiful wood seen and enjoyed because they don't have any window treatments on these windows and you can see why. Back in the 50s, the kitchen was, you know, think about it. You've got Donna Reed, right? Or I Love Lucy. And they were in the kitchen, which was completely separate from the dining room or any other space. Today, we have these open concept floor plans, not so much in a mid-century modern home. Instead, what they would do is they would use this space to create an open pass-through. Remember the pass-throughs? Oh my gosh, you know, mom would send the food over. And then above it, because every single inch counts, this is cabinetry on the other side. And on this side, it's easily accessible pottery and dishes to set the table with. This is a 75 year old home, okay? Or somewhere around there. It's older than I am, thank God. Anyway, how many kitchens can survive that when you're talking about plumbing and everything else and the, and the cooking things? So those things have been replaced, but the original cabinetry is here. And you know what really sets this apart from being so different from what we see today and makes this 100% mid-century modern is that rather than cabinet doors that opened, they made ones that slid. All about being clean, easy, even with handles, you gotta have some sort of handle, or they could have cut out something, but it's still made in the same wood, so it's, it kind of like goes away. You will notice though, that like I said in the other room, there are no ceiling lights in here. They didn't do can lights then, or if they did, they probably didn't do them, but if they did, they didn't put them in mid-century modern homes. What they would do is hang a sculptural light fixture. It gives off a soft glow, but I will tell you, it does feel a lot darker in here than most of us would want for a kitchen. I want to show you where the light is coming from though. There is natural light in this kitchen and it's through these windows. Remember how I told you in the living room that they don't do window treatments? Well, here is an example of a mid-century modern type window treatment. 
So what you see rather than, you know, floor to ceiling, wall to wall panels of, you know, linen like we like to do today, they would have cafe curtains, just short little cafe curtains, but there would be a design in it. This matches so perfectly with the the dishes and the pottery of the day and turquoise by the way was a very big accent color in the mid-century modern color scheme whether it was in the 50s or in the 60s here we are in the hallway to the bedrooms this is so typical of a mid-century home built at this time remember these were affordable homes so nothing opulent it was all about function simple clean and airy if it could be here's a, a something you'd see a lot in mid-century homes a folding door so this gave them the ability to close something off so you didn't see the linens and things like that but it's also lightweight it would be uh, very, I don't even know, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell what this is made out of, but it's some sort of something. And then it's woven together, okay? This also is very space-saving. Again, everything is selected with intention. Let's head on down to the primary bedroom. This chair style, the shape of it, the arms that come out to a point, the legs, the cushions, even the height off the floor has probably been manufactured and knocked off in every possible way since the day it was designed. These are iconic, they are the real thing. But I can tell you, I've had this style chair in my home. It doesn't look exactly like this, but it's very, very close. So this is a, a mid-century touch that you can bring into any home. And I think it's um, actually really cool. I even like the smell of the wood. This might be teak, because teak was really highly used in woods back in the day. This little sconce, look at this. Doesn't this just look totally period appropriate? By the way, have you noticed I'm wearing geometrics? Black and white, that's my mid-century blouse. And hello, I mean, this is a great lamp. I love this, I'm sure I saw it at a flea market. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you. I think, now that I look up close, they've put a shade, they have. Ha, huh, that is so clever. This is a mid-century modern shade on a Victorian lamp. You can see, this is a typical mid-century modern nightstand. There are no handles on it. It's got the finger spot here in order to open the drawers, but it's low. The bed is low, the nightstands are low, and the nightstands are actually relatively small. All right, you guys, um, this is it for the tour today here at the Lady Lorton House. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'm just gonna tell you, it is an Airbnb, so if you're ever gonna come to Tulsa and you have a hankering to get down deep and not dirty, but you know, enjoy, surround yourself in a mid-century modern home that still maintains its integrity today. There'll be a link in the description box below. You should check them out. We've covered the mid-century modern look. You've seen the high-end version of it and the very accessible version of it. And I hope this has helped clear up some things for you or maybe given you some inspiration because you know I like to do that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below and tell me, could you ever live in a mid-century modern home or would you just be happy to have a few pieces that you could use? I happen to love mid-century and I use pieces that are either 100% mid-century or sometimes they're just inspired by the mid-century look. Everything is so shapely and has that, I don't know, it looks like a sculptural piece of art. That's why of all the styles out there, I honestly think that the furniture for mid-century is probably one of the most iconic styles that we have out there. You see a mid-century piece and you know it. All right, you guys. Happy Mid-Century Modern Day, and I will see you guys next week, next Thursday at 2 o'clock Central, where we will be uploading yet another video on 
interior design styles. And don't forget, there is the design styles quiz available on my website, which is rebeccaropeson.com. How creative is that? <laughs> Easy to find. And if you go there, you can take that quiz for free. And what will it do for you? It will help you identify what are the things that you are most drawn to, thus coming up with probably your top three design styles that you like. And then at the end of this series, I will be coming back and talking to you about how to successfully combine two to three different styles in your home and come up with something that doesn't fit into any one style itself because it's your style. All right? All right, you guys, I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Here, Johnny. Would you hand this to your father? He wanted some butter.